All right, so let's go through uh, number 23 on 18B. And we'll use that to kind of segue into the, uh, well, not really new material, but material that builds off of this. So we're on number 23, and we're trying to graph this cosine function. We have y is equal to 5 cosine of one-half x. Now, to graph this, what must we do? What's the first thing we have to figure out here? What's the first thing we have to figure out here? What was that? The chart up. Okay, well before we even do that, let's get an idea what this picture is going to look like. How high is it going to go? How low will it go? Okay, we need to figure out the amplitude, correct? So what is the amplitude of this particular function? Five. Five, that's right. That means the highest point of this function is going to be what? Five. Five, and the lowest is going to be what? Negative five. And it's going to bounce in between, right? It's going to have a sine wave in between, or a cosine wave in between. So now, what is my uh, period here? We also need to understand the period because we're only graphing one cycle, correct? So we need to know how many radians, how many degrees that one full cycle takes. So what will the period be of this particular function? Remember, what do we do to determine period of a function? 2 pi divided by... 2 pi, because in a normal cosine function, in the parent cosine function, one cycle is 2 pi, right? So we use that as the base. And what do we have to divide it by? One half. One half, which is the coefficient of the x in there, right? Because that's going to be changing the horizontal movement. This changes and stretches it vertically. This changes and stretches it horizontally. Right? Meaning the cycles will either shorten or lengthen, right? So what is my period going to be here? How do we divide that? 2 pi over 1 times what? 2 over 1, which gives me 4 pi. So my period is what? 4 pi. So one cycle will occur in what? 4 pi radians or what? 720 degrees, correct? So when we get our chart here, it should match up to this at the end. Otherwise, we know we've done something wrong. So now, what do we do next? We already know what some of this graph is going to look like, correct? We know that my amplitude is going to be what? So my highest point is going to be up here at 5, and my lowest will be down here at negative 5. I want you labeling everything, and we know that the period is what? 4 pi, so that means I know I can put at the back here 4 pi, correct? Because that's one length of this particular cosine wave. Now we have to do what? Now we got to create our chart, right? So that we can actually get the specifics of this. So we have to plug in what for my x's here? What degrees have we talked about always plugging in? Zero. Zero. 90 degrees, 180, 270, and 360. Correct? Always plug those in. Now, I'm not so much worried about the 1 half x right now. I'm just worried about the cosines at these specific degrees, or radians. I mean, we could do these in radians as well. All right? We could do pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi if we really wanted to. Still going to be the same thing. So, what is the cosine of zero? One. one. So that means we got to multiply by five, right? So five times one is five. So my amplitude right here is five. Correct? What is the cosine of 90 degrees? Zero. Zero. So five times zero is zero. Correct? What is the cosine of 180? Negative 1. 
negative 1. So 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And what is the sine, or cosine of 270? Zero. 5 times 0 is 0. zero. And then what is the cosine of 2 pi or 360? 4. Or what is it? 1. So 5 times 1 is 5. All right. Does that make sense so far? This is my amplitude changes as I go through my cosine function here, as I graph this. So changes in my amplitude, how high or how low I go. Now we got to worry about my x values, or technically my radians or degrees here. And that is going to change because I have a 1 half in front here. It is going to stretch it or it's going to shrink it as I, as I go horizontally. So that means I've got to set this 0 and all these degrees equal to 1 half x and solve for x. If I can do that, I know what my radians will be. I'll know what my degrees will be that I need to be dealing with at these amplitudes. Okay? Now, how do we do this? To solve for x, what do we have to do? What is that? Divide by what? One half. Or what's another way of dividing by one half? Multiply by, two. multiply by two. So if I multiply both sides by two, I get two times zero, which is zero. zero. So I'm dealing with zero degrees, and my amplitude is what? Five. five. So zero degrees is right here, amplitude five, correct? Now. 90 times 2, right? Because we're multiplying all of these by 2, we get what? 180. 180. So at 180, or in other words, pi, what is my amplitude? Zero. Zero, correct? So I'm here on my x axis. Now I multiply this by 2, and what do I get? 360, right? So that's my next one, my next critical portion of this. So that's 2 pi, if I want to write the equivalents down. All right, and at 2 pi, or 360, what is my amplitude? Negative 5, so I'm down here. And then I go to what? 270 times 2, which is 540. Okay, 540 is basically 3 pi or 540 degrees. And I want you labeling all this, correct? So that we make sure that we understand how we can go from degrees to radians, radians to degrees, and know what this picture is going to look like whether we're dealing with degrees or radians. So now, at, two, at 540, what is my uh, amplitude? Zero. Zero. So it goes right here. And then at the very last one, we have 360 times 2, which is? 720, correct? Is that, and 720 is my 4 pi, which again is the what? Length of one cycle, correct? <coughs> and what has to happen at 4 pi? What's my amplitude? 5. So it comes back and completes my one full cycle. Now all we got to do is connect our dots. Connect our dots and we have our graph. There it is right there. That is one full cycle of this function. It matches up with my amplitude. High point is 5, low point is negative 5. My cycle is a total of 4 pi, or 720 degrees. And all, now all you need to do is the domain and range. What's my domain? Now remember, this function continues on. We only graphed one cycle, correct? Can continue on in either direction. So what's my domain? Exactly. What's my range? Negative five. Negative five to positive five, including those, right? Simple, correct? Do we have any other questions on this? Anything else? Alright. Now, 
Well, I'm going to use this to kind of help us segue into our next topic. Not really the next topic, but the building off of, uh, of this topic. So in the next one, we're going to be talking about how different phase shifts, so different horizontal shifts now, or up and down vertical shifts. Before, we just stretched it, right? We just stretched it vertically or stretched it horizontally. Now we're actually going to have some phase shifts or shifts, both vertically and horizontally. So if we take a look at a very similar graph, let's say y is equal to 5 cosine. We're going to build it off of the one we just did, right? Let's go 5 cosine of... Um, Three x plus nine. Now, what is the difference between? I'll put these in parentheses here. What is the difference between what we did here and what we did there? What's the difference? Can you explain one difference to them in these? There's a plus nine in it. There are parentheses. We do have a number in front of the x, which is different, but it's still a constant in front, right? But we're also adding something to this. We're adding something directly to this x, because it's inside those parentheses. So we're going to have a shift here of this graph. It's going to look similar to this graph, okay? but there's going to be a shift going on here, and we've got to find out this shift. So. We are still going to do the same process as we did in this previous problem. Okay, so just pay attention because there will be ones on the next assignment just like this. Not a ton of them, but we're going to segue into them. Still, we need to find out all this information here. What is my amplitude? Because the amplitude tells me the highest and lowest points, the peaks and valleys, right? The vertical stretch, correct? The vertical stretch. So what's my amplitude? It's still five, right? hasn't changed. My amplitude is still equal to 5. Now my period is where things are going to change slightly from the previous one. The period in this one was what was directly in front of my x, right? Where I have a constant times some variable. Okay? We have a slight problem in this problem. No. Hold on. Okay, so we don't have a constant times a variable that are separated, right? We have a constant times a variable plus a constant. We need to get it into a form where we have one constant times one quantity, or a quantity times one qu another quantity, right? So what we're going to have to do here is factor out a GCF. So that we get one quantity times another quantity, right? So that it is of the same form as this. And then we can determine our uh, period. So what can we do to modify this? So that I get one quantity times another quantity. Because that's of the form similar to this. And we know how to do this. What is that? Okay, got a 3. So we get y is equal to 5 cosine 3 times what? x plus 3. Now we have a similar form of this. Correct? Now I'm going to take the number that I just took out and use that to calculate my period. <laughs> it's still going to be based off of the original cosine, right? Which is originally 2 pi for one cycle. So what am I going to do to determine the period here now? I take the number that's in front, take 2 pi and divide it by that, just like I did in this one here. I took 2 pi and took the constant that was being multiplied to my second quantity, and I divided it, divided 2 pi by it, right? Now I'm going to take the constant that is being multiplied to a second quantity and divide the 2 pi by it as well. And that means that one full cycle occurs in what? <coughs> How many radians does one full cycle occur in? 
2 pi over 3, which in your unit circle is how many degrees? 120 degrees. So one full cycle will occur in 120 degrees. Okay? Now, that gives me a lot of useful information about my graph here. What is my amplitude? What is going to be my highest point? Five will be my highest point. And what will be my lowest point? Okay. And my cycle is going to be what? 120, correct? Degrees or 2 pi over 3. Now the problem here is we are getting some shifting going on. Vertical <coughs> shifting because it's attached here. If there was a number added outside of these parentheses, such as a 5, then we're worried about our up and down shifts, our vertical shifts. This controls my vertical stretch. This controls my horizontal stretch. This inside of here controls my vertical shift, or horizontal shift. And this out here controls my vertical shift. All right, so. That means that there's going to be some shifting going on here. So I can't just write 2 pi over 3 or 120 at the end because I don't know exactly where this thing's going to end. But one cycle will take 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 radians. All right? We just don't know if it's shifting to the left or shifting to the right. And we're going to find that out here once we start to plot this, once we start to figure out my x and y chart. So now we're going to go to an x and y chart just like we did in the previous problem. So far, nothing has really changed other than I had to factor out a 3, so I get one quantity times another quantity, so I can use what I've done with my period and match it with what we're going to do here. So now we have to do what? Create our chart. And we are still using the same exact degrees as we have always used. It is not changing. <coughs> This process will not change, and that's the nice thing about it. It stays consistent all the time. Now, what are my cosines of these? Don't worry about all this other information right here. Don't worry about that stuff, just like we didn't worry about the one-half x. We'll bring that into play here once I calculate my x values here. All right? So what is the cosine of 0? 1. 1. Cosine of 0 is 1 times what? 5 gives me what? 5. That's the amplitude right there. So now, at 90 degrees, what is the cosine of 90? 0. So we have 5 times 0, which is 0. What is the cosine of 180? Negative 1. Negative 1. 5 times negative 1 is what? Negative 5. What about the si uh, cosine of 270? Zero. Zero. So we get zero right here, right? That's so five times zero, zero. And then what is the cosine of 360? Four. One times five is what? <coughs> five. Five. Okay? Those are my amplitude changes throughout this cycle, correct? Okay, now what do we have to do to find the changes to my degrees here because of my shifts and everything? Because of my horizontal stretch and because of my shift, what am I going to have to do now? Take all of this and set it equal to each of these, right? Just like we did here. Take the 1 half x and set it equal to all of them. So let's take the 3 times x plus 3 and set it equal to all of these. Because that's what's on this portion right here after the cosine, correct? So the process still stays the same as what we did in the previous problem here except it's way more complex now. Now, what do we have to do to solve these for x? Because these x values here, these degrees here, the modified degrees based on the shifts and the stretches, right, are going to be what I plot. So what do I have to do to solve for x here? Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So 0 divided by 3 is what? Then what do I have to do? I got x plus 3 is equal to 0. Subtract 3. So what do I get? Negative 3. That means this graph here has shifted to the negative side, right? That's my horizontal shift now. It shifted what? 
three degrees to the left. All right? That's why we can't put our final to 120 right here because the entire thing is shifting this way. So this final one right here is actually going to be three degrees less than 120. Or 117 is what we should get here. And let's check that. Now, what is uh, 90 divided by 3? 30. Minus 3 is 27. So we're at 27 degrees right here. Now, at negative 3 degrees, I have an amplitude of what? 5. So I'm right here, correct? At 27 degrees, I have an amplitude of what? 0. Now, what is... Negative 180 divided by 3. Minus 3, it's 57 degrees, right? So we're at 57 degrees here. Now, 57 degrees, what's my amplitude? Negative 5. Now we go to 70 divided by 3. What do we have there? 90 minus 3 is 87 degrees, right? At 87 degrees, what's my amplitude? Zero. Now, what is 360 divided by 3? Minus 3, which is 117. So at 117 degrees, what is my amplitude? 5. So I have it up here. Now, is my whole one cycle here? Is my whole one cycle 120 degrees? Oh, well, 117, but don't forget, I also am 3 degrees on the left-hand side. So you have to add that 3 degrees to the 117. Now am I at 120? So you are, that one cycle does take 120 degrees. It just happens to be the shift has now made it so that when we get through one cycle, we're at 117, right? Because of the horizontal shift. Does that make sense? Now, watch the beauty of this. What if I were to add 4 to this? What do you think is going to happen if I add 4 to the outside? Now remember, this inside here controls my horizontal shifts, right? This right here controls my vertical shifts. So what do you think is going to happen to everything on this graph? It's moving up 4. So that means that this point right here is now 6, 7, 8, 9. It's up here, correct? This moves up what? 4. This moves up what? 4. It's a negative 1, correct? This moves up what? 4. This moves up what? 4. And what do we have now? Right there. Does that make sense? Now, if you did have a 4 here, okay, when you did your sine or your cosine, you did what? Cosine of 0 is what? 1. Times the 5 is what? But then we have to add 4 if you have a problem like that. And that's where we'll get what then? 9, which is where I put it. Right? And you do the same for all of these. This would be 0, right? or this would not be 0. What would it be? 4, because we'd get 0, but then we'd have to add 4 to it to get 4, right? Now, again, this is two separate problems, but we're just changing things later. Does that make sense? What was your question? The amplitude, okay, would still be the same, okay? However, this is shifting it. It's still what? 5 above, 5 below, it's just now shifting up. So the amplitude would still be considered 5. Okay? Any questions? Okay? I want you to turn in that B, and then I'm going to have you work on a little bit of B-2. Okay? Oh, you do? Yes, you mean. I would like you to finish off B if you haven't already done so. Oh, you got it? Yeah. You have it? Okay. I'd like you to try and get 1 through 14 done on B-2, which again, the first eight problems should, shouldn't take very long at all. First eight problems should not take very long at all. Alright? So I'd like you to try to get 1 through 14 done for tomorrow. You want to need one more then, right? Allison.
I got another 18 pack. I lost one. Yeah. Does everybody have an 18 B-2 now? Okay. I want you to work on 1 through 14 on this. So if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, we'll continue to go through this tomorrow. Okay. We only have a couple more days, and then we're done. So let's just...